Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. Nestled on the banks of the Ponderay River, the quiet community of Medellin Falls holds a treasure. This schoolhouse, deteriorating from time, was destined for the wrecking ball, and if not for the persistence of retired English teacher Eva Gale Six, the grand structure would be no more. The town was just about nothing in 1910. That's when the cement plant started. This was a piece of real front frontier. There were not roads. You came here by river or you didn't come at all. And it appears that the railroad and the mining interests probably wanted a statement. This is a civilized place. You can not only come here, you can bring your family. So they built a very grandiose school here for 20 little children. We have 30,000 square feet of space. There were three classrooms and all the rest of its support space. Something really magnificent in its time. After completing a home for local entrepreneur Louis Larson, Cutter and Melgram were designated as the architects for the new school building. Kurtman Cutter had probably the most remarkable career move anyone ever had. He came to Spokane about two years before the major fire and at the same time that the mine fortunes were booming. So here were people with money needing new homes, and he designed a lot. His career is interesting that it's totally eclectic. If you like the eclectic, you would like his career, because you can't really look at a building and know that that was his. No, he's not a contributor to style or the history of architecture or anything, but just a lot of really neat buildings, and did this one to our good fortune. In 1991, after discovering the original plans in Spokane's Teeny Cowles Museum, funding was then acquired from the National Trust for Historic Preservation and the Washington Commission for the Humanities. Eva Gale then set out on the idea of employing volunteer help to restore the building for primarily the local theater group, but it quickly became more than just that. We sincerely wanted to keep the history of the building as a school. We've turned it into other things. But we did get funding for a small rural schools exhibit or museum. And it's a history of the schools in this community. But by extension, it's a history of American rural education because the experience here was so typical. You know, there was growth, there was proliferation. There were some, at one time, 12 schools in this small region. And then there was consolidation and, and all the problems and advantages of that. And so we wanted to preserve all that. What we have now is a building that houses primarily a performing arts center, but also a fine branch library, a small rural schools museum, a lot of community facilities, and is also the rehabilitation of a major piece of architecture that just happened to be in Medellin Falls. Considering the building was primarily refurbished for the community theater, the room that was originally the gymnasium was converted. Seats were purchased from the old Dishman Theater in Spokane, a decent lighting system was installed, and a revolver was built into the stage. In the meantime, other parts of the building were converted to office space. We've had to turn the building into an income earner. The whole thing can't be theater. So there is some space here to be rented out, and that's basically what we operate with. You know, as you look around, you see things that aren't quite finished and it just takes more work to get more funding raised. Um, it took a lot of money to refurbish a building this large, but the thing, the ingredient that made it possible was local volunteers. When I look back at shots, I, I saw some yesterday of what was going on just a year ago. Just a year ago, that, that upper level was totally open, just starting. It goes fast when there's money to do it. Money and people are hard to come by in Medellin Falls. With a population of about 215 and jobs drying up and moving away, revitalizing the building into the Cutter Theater seems to be akin to revitalizing the community and the hope that the arts will help invigorate the populace. Well, I'm proud to say we have, we're providing two salaries. We've provided a lot of salary for uh, the developers, Carpenter that you hear in the background, and for people like that. We've put a lot of money, all we could possibly put into local pockets. And we have two regular full-time employees. More importantly, I think, is the, the impact of the arts. The arts are just sort of mind-broadening, you know, and I think that's a good thing. Financing coupled with desire and volunteerism. The necessary ingredients, 
Eva Gale needed to undertake such a project. I often say that it's like raising a child. If, if you had any idea everything you were going to go through in the 20 years it took to raise a child, nobody would have children. And that was pretty much true here. We didn't know what we were getting into. But it continues to be so gratifying that I don't think anybody regrets it. Nobody I've ever heard said, they're sorry we got into this. How do we get out of it? It's just, boy, this is going well. I hope it continues. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS-TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.